So if you remember the outline we did for the circuit board, you can see that we have the two ends, but they're not connected together yet. So because we are using the start and select and a single transistor to drive all the LEDs, the LEDs over here really want to be connected to this board. So we could just have a board where we send a single trigger wire over and another transistor over here, or both wires for power and ground over, so that the circuit board split into two small parts. It will keep cost down, but to be honest, it's not going to be that expensive to just join these two boards together. So what we want to do first is make an island between these two. And we'll just do that by making a connection and just make a sort of combined circuit board like this. Uh, let's just take a look. So all we've done is join the boards together. So we've got a big long path. We'd have to think now about a few things here. We have TP2 here for the select button and TP3 here for the start button. So similar to these, we want to make sure we wrap around them with some design as well. So something like that. So now we can solder to TP2 and TP3 for start and select. And we've also got to think about where we're going to place the components. So they're not very big but we do have to think about where we can actually fit them. There's going to be a rubber connection over all of here, so there's going to be a rubber pad interfering there. We've got a thin trace line here going through and up to the triggers. We can place the LEDs fine, but we currently have nowhere to place the actual components. And now the other thing is as well, when we did this, we didn't consider um, connecting to the 3.3 volt. We only did the 5 volt connection here on S2. We also were going to do two separate boards, so we did an extra 5 volt connection here. So this connection isn't needed. There's kind of no point in having that solder point. And we also now need a 3.3 volt rail. We'll figure out where we're going to place the components in a min. Uh, I've got a feeling, to be honest, we can do it at the same time. I think the plastic shell comes down this line here, so this kind of green area outlines where the plastic shell of the Game Boy Advanced comes down. Um, so there's a plastic line right on uh, this white line. I'm just going to place one in a shell now and have a look. And yeah, so the shells come right the way down this edge. Uh, so if we come inside the edge even slightly, we're out the way of any plastic and any obstruction, and we can place our little circuit here. So we really only need a little bit of space here to place the circuit. So we probably just want to do something like this. Just give us a bit of space there. We'll bring that in. And then we will want to mimic this and make a connection here as well. So roughly in line with that. Got plenty of room either side. And we end up with something like this. So we can place the components well within this area. Uh, we could also put a little bit of a silk screen there, uh, the logo or something. So I think we have everything we need here. We've got the buttons, the triggers, the 5 volt, the 3 volt rail. Uh, we have enough room here, plenty, to put the two chips. The power can come along. We have the start and select pads. And that's really it. Now we could do like power LED, we could go down the sides here and illuminate the bumpers as well maybe. But I don't think we really want to do that. Uh, we're free to do it after if we feel like, we can just bring the circuit board down and add some LEDs for bumpers. But I'd say we're good there. So let me just do one final step and just round off these new corners we haven't rounded off. Okay, so I think there is our current finished circuit board shape for now. Now all we have to do is save it as a DXF. So if we do file save as, uh, select DXF, make sure it's R14, R12 will not export well, it's really old. Save it out, make sure we select polylines and make sure we have millimeters selected as the size. Update with the new file. And we're good to jump back to Ultium. In Ultium, we just jump to the PCB and this will be similar again in EasyDA. 
I'm just going to do file import DXF, import this DXF, select millimeters as the scale because that's what we exported as, click OK, and you can see there's our board shape now. So we just select this and move it somewhere down here. First thing we've got to do is click on one of the outlines and tab to select the outline. I'm going to do design board shape from selected objects. And now if we look at the board in 3D, you can see there's our circuit board. So you'll notice all the cutouts are missing. So let's just add all those. This is a bit of a pain, but we have to just select each one. Um, tools, convert, and then convert a board cutout from selected object. And that will cut one hole. Go ahead and do this for every other hole. And there is all the board cutouts. So there's what our board is going to look like at the minute. That's nice and easy. Next step is to import everything from the schematic here. So to do that, we'll just do import changes. I don't want to bother with adding rooms here. Execute changes. And then it will bring in all the components we've got to fit on the board. So you can see here is all the components. Uh, just because I want them in a smaller area, I'm just going to do tools, component placement, arrange with them rectangle, and just draw a little area to move them all into. Going to get rid of all the uh, errors for now, just so we can see clearly. And then all these uh, silk screens, all the yellow is what will be written on the circuit board. I'm just going to hide all of those. So we're just dealing with components now. And all we've got to do is place stuff. So just pick and choose what we want. And let's just start laying this out. So the LEDs we can place in an inner circle or we can all place at the bottom. I think an inner circle here will look nice. So just pick an LED group. You want D1 and resistor 1. So we could do D1 and resistor 1 and tools cross select mode and ultium's on at the minute so when I tab back now they'll be selected so you can see I can then just drag them over so if we say D1's going here, the LED we can leave the resistors out the way um, in fact we will, maybe no you don't want too many lines, yeah we can, we'll leave the resistors out the way we'll place all the resistors over here I think so uh, let me think about this, actually no we want to bring the power rail up singularly and then join everything together. So we'll put the resistors by the LEDs. So we'll do this, we'll get nice and close, and if we look visually, we can see how close they are. We could change these to 0402 LEDs as well, depending on size, but I think the size is fine. So we've got one there, and we have put an, is that an 02 by mistake? You just check the footprint of these resistors, I don't want to use an 0201. That will be a pain to solve. Yep, I've accidentally used 0201. Let me just fix that. And just grab another resistor for now. 0201s are really small. You only want to really use them when you're struggling for space. And we're not here. So I'm just going to chuck in, say, a 470R. So we're going to have to delete all them. R5 to R14. Paste them all in. Reannotate the schematic. And then just re import the changes. And there we go, something a bit easier to solder. So we have the LED there for one. Do the same for two. Select two, go back. Drag them out the pile, position them. We can do two here. Now the only thing with having them all in a circle is it might get in the way actually of um, the rubber. So I'm actually going to move it to the other side. And we'll fit the LED there. Like that. And then we'll do the other one above then I reckon.
and we want to try and keep them all facing each other in terms of uh, if we look at where the lines are trying to go so this is the incoming power and then incoming power here so we want to try and look at where these dots are that are trying to make connections and try and get them all pointing to the same place so each end of the resistors will join together and each end of the powers will. I'm just going to continue to do this for every LED and just place them in exactly the same way. Just click, drag and position. And that's six of them placed now, seven of them. So we've got the D-pad placed on the outer ring. Uh, we've got the trigger up the top. We've got the two start and select. And you can see what it's starting to look like. So it's starting to look like an LED board now. And then we have this lot left. So let's just keep going. So that's all the LEDs placed now. So we have start, select, D-pad, trigger, trigger, A and B. So now we need to look at placing the inputs from these triggers here. So let's just do the resistors and capacitors on the input buttons here. So we need to start by connecting these two J's or putting them near the buttons. So what we're going to do is we have these here for the start and select. And we know TP3 was start, so this dot here. So because we're going to solder here to uh, the start, we could put this extra pad here as a breakout for in case uh, the wire snaps or something. So that's just like an extra pad there. Uh, or rather here, this is where the start is. So we'll do the start sort of here out the way. Maybe that's going to be under the rubber though, but it's still a backup pad if we need it. Possibly want to place the start actually. Could do with placing that out the way. Could have possibly added a bit to the board here. The other option is we just run the start all the way back to this area. So actually I'm going to chuck the start over here. Um, same with select. I think I'll try and fit everything over here. I think we'll fit all this in. Yeah, it's going to be tight, but I think we'll do it. So start and select are going to be there. Um, and it does mean, actually, we are going to be really tight because we'll be trying to fit all the pads as well. No, okay. Tell you what, let's, I'm just trying to think here, you see, because we've got to get connections through here. So I'm trying to leave a bit of a gap. Uh, we don't want to put this here. It's going to block us getting through. Uh, this is more of a backup pad anyway. You have something ripped. Um, so it's kind of, it's a nice to have, but it doesn't need to necessarily be there. Um, the select one's easy. The select one can just go right there. It's not blocking anything because that's the only thing coming out of it. This start, I'm just going to place here. I'm not 100% happy with the putting this here. Really? Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to put him there for now. And it, like I say, it's a backup pad, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, then we need, what we were going to do, let's get the two capacitor and resistor combo here. And again, this is under the rubber, so actually we do want to keep them over here. So we do want all these components over here now. So let's just place these, and you can see these lines indicate where we need to make connections. So as it's showing, you know, these two pads, we need to connect them. So if we place them close to each other, uh, we can get a good connection there. We select these two and bring them together. And they could live down here out the way of the rubber. But again, I'm just going to go for keeping all components in one place. See if we can fit them in this little gap we made. And in theory, we could have made this gap, uh, this area here, quite a little bit taller as well. So we could just re-import the design if we really wanted to. But I think we should be able to cram them in. So there's them two. Uh, we could rotate these around and we could have these back to back instead. So we could have them like this and like this. That would be the start and select slow all in a line. And we'd have to get one wire out. The middles would be ground. Um, start select will be there. So we're going to have to leave a little gap. Just 
just to that side to get this wire around. Not necessarily that much. There we go. I think. Get that closer. That should fit in there. Uh, the 5 and the 3 volt pads are just extras again for these connections here. We don't really need them at all, to be honest, uh, because we're going to connect straight to the pads. So these are actually... Uh, I don't think we need this 3 and 5 volts. They're going to be everywhere, so the 3 volts, we can put an extra pad here. And the 5 volts, we could put an extra pad down there. It really doesn't matter because we're not going to use them, so we'll keep them out of the way. And what it does is basically just gives us these extra solder pads in case something rips. Uh, they're going to be under the rubbers, like I say, so it's not ideal, but we're not really going to use them. We'd, I just like to have the odd bit of breakout in case something goes wrong. Uh, same with the ground. The ground we are picking up technically from the trigger grounds up here. Um, so we're going to have a ground up there and a ground up there is where we're going to make the real connection. Similar to we're going to actually tap this real 3 volts off this connection here. And the real 5 volts is going to come off here. So we'll add them after. Uh, so for the ground again, it's another pointless extra. Let's just chuck him up another top corner just out the way. And now all we've got to fit in is these. So you can see we're going to fit these in. What do we have left? Select them, go over, and see what's selected. So we've got the pull-up resistors to this chip, so they won't be right next to this chip. So this chip here and these resistors want to be together. Uh, let me just fix the warnings in this with rules. And now we want to have, you can see this pin is trying to connect to this pad. And this one will try to connect to this pad. So they can go something like that. We could, yeah, I think that's it to be honest. It's fine like that. That pad can come out and down. And distance wise, yeah, that's fine for clearance. Could go a bit closer if we need to. And nothing's out the other side, bar three volt so that could live around there it could technically live like here and then last one to place will be the nor gate which can just dump there for the minute and transistor can go anywhere really and just look at where we want the triggers to escape so the gate trigger is going to come explicitly from this pad here so you can see what I'm trying to do now is we have the gate trigger here that needs to be connected to here. And that's the only place that wire is going. So what we probably want to do is move this up. And I'm also trying to keep the entrances free to the circuit so we can escape wires. Whenever there's a ground, we're going to go to the other side of the circuit so we can go nice and close to that. And we won't get in the way of anything. Uh, this NOR gate has internal connections again here. So we'll keep these two kind of close like this. And then the start is slow, which are these two, want to connect to these two pads. So we could actually flip them around, move these up like this. We could possibly flip them around this way. And then they would connect there. That would probably make more use of the space. Uh, that transistor would want to go somewhere close to that. So maybe, and this is where you'll spend most of your time when you're doing circuit board design, is just moving things around, trying to fit them in. And uh, that doesn't want to go down there. kind of want to do that. So what about if we put them side by side instead? And this one's at the bottom. So that would be the top. This would be bottom.
I think that works best. There we go, that's a good layout. We've even got space for the logo. So I reckon that position, and again, this might change when we try to lay it all out, but I think that position, well, it certainly fits everything physically. Now the challenge is, can we wire this together and make all the connections? So what we're gonna be doing now is everywhere there's this kind of wire joining pads together. This is where we make all the electrical connections. So the PCB has, in this case, two layers. So it's got the top side and it's got the bottom side. And what we do, the red in this case indicates the top layer. As you can see here, red and top and blue as bottom. We have nothing on the bottom at the minute, but we can route wires top and bottom. So we have double the amount of space we need. So make all the easy connections first. So I'm just gonna do a connection between the close pads. And when I'm doing the wires, I like to hide the silk screen. So the stuff that appears white on the circuit board. Uh, that's just basically enamel ink on the top for identifying. I like to hide that and just look at signal layers to start with. So this is pure electrical connection. It gives you a better idea of where you can connect to. So let's just make all these quick connections that are close. And then we'll work on bringing other connections out as we need them. So I think we've put that component the wrong way, really. That must be that way. There we go. I'm going to wire from here down. And then I'm going to drop to the other side of the board using a via. And then you can see it goes blue. So I'm going to go under this red, come out around here, come back up to the top layer, and make a connection. So what that looks like now in the circuit board, as you can see here, we have the wire coming down, and then this hole in the circuit board that's plated on the inside there, as you can see, goes through the board, comes out the other side, goes under the components, comes back, and then joins to the other side of the resistor. And you'll see that on the boards, these are what they call vias, and that's all they are, they're just physically Piece of copper coming in, going through under the board as a plated bit of copper, and then it goes through like a tunnel out the other side. And that's called the via. So that's how we bridge between top and bottom. I'm also just gonna tent them. So you can see there's exposed copper here, which means it's electrically conductive both sides. So if we rest that on the board underneath, it's gonna make electrical contact and short things out. So I'm just gonna fix that, um, in this case with design rules here. And now you can see that it's covered with the green ink, in a sense here, the solder resist, uh, which makes it electrically non-conductive. And you can see it visually here. So that's that connection done. I'll start bridging out some of these further ones. Uh, when you're carrying power, you wanna be aware of the thickness of your traces. So in this case, mine is 0.254 millimeters thick at the minute. Because these are only LEDs, they're only carrying less than half an amp. Uh, I know that that's more than thick enough for a wire. When you start dealing with 100 plus milliamps, you want to start making sure the width of the traces is correct. There's calculators online to do that for how much traces can carry in current. It's just something to bear in mind as we design, but I already know for a fact these are going to be perfectly fine for the current we're carrying. See when we get here and we want to get past, what we can do is go around like this, or we can just hold the circuit there it makes more sense to drag this back like this so we can just carry on through. So again, you'll, you will redesign um, the traces and the roots as you're going and make use of that underside of the board. We don't wanna go to the bottom of the board too much because we want that to be the ground plane flowing throughout the design. So try and limit your uh, use of the second layer for trace routing, but where you need to use it. So we just go up here, carry on like this, up through. And you can see here, now I could go um, under and cut through again like this, but that's an extra via for no reason. And some factories charge you a price per via as well. So they add a bit of extra, the more vias you use. So when you can, and there's gonna be no other circuitry here, I could just go all the way around like this. 
and go straight to this point. And there's no harm done there. So we're creating more loops and more length of copper. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. You can go for the cleaner design, which is to go straight to source, like we said, like this. And straight to source. That way, it's entirely preference. I'm going to stick to this way for now. I'm just going to carry on around like this, joining everywhere we need points. So we just keep making connections. And we keep going until we see none of these white lines. And you can see there now we've broke out of this area. So that's all wired in. And we have four connections wanting to go all the way back over here. And that currently looks like this. So I'm now going to ignore these four first. Because we'll have to bring them all over. And let's jump to this side and do the same here. Making the connections together here. Now when I'm making connections to pads we're going to solder on, like for example this one to here, what I like to do, because when you heat up this pad, if we take a look, if you were going to solder a wire to this pad, you've got a really thin connection to it, and this can cause fracturing, as well as lifting. So I tend to take the trace that's coming off it, that's hopefully coming off it a little bit, and make the width nice and fat. So probably 0.8 maybe. There we go. And then what you have is a nice thick trace that will absorb the heat and won't fracture as much. And that's now this side broke out. And again, we have the ground pad, the two test pads, and this one pad wanting to come over now. So what we want to do now is focus on this area, connect all the close pads together. So I'm trying to also ignore where it says ground as well, these ground connections, because they will all root to the bottom side. So I know they're going to be effectively removed when we get to the bottom side. But I, try, but I try to do the ground last. So just try and focus on everything except the ground pads. So that one will be ground, that one will be ground. This one it's hard to see if it wants to connect anywhere else. Nope, that's just the ground wire going through. Uh, this one needs to break out the power of this chip or the power to this chip. So this time we will move that out the way. Break out here. And get out that way. So we just about made it out there. If we take a look at that chip, you can see the V is nice and clear of the component. So now let's try and focus on if there is a ground we can wire comfortably, which we can't really get too easily there. We could have wired that. Could actually just move the transistor over so we can break out a bit easier. There we go. You can do like the grounds that are close. Just because it removes some of the little nests that it's trying to say we need to connect. And now we're down to really bridging the gaps. So the computer just crashed at that point. I've pretty much got it back to where it was. It might look a bit different because I had to redo the whole board. But this is what it currently looks like. We're at the same point again. So let's try again. Um, so let's just get this down to connecting over here somewhere. And what we need to do now is really bring these 5 volt, actually we don't want to bring that too fat through there because we're fitting the other wires through. Um, we want to connect the 3 volt and the 5 volt to the actual pads here uh, using vias. So if we get a via and replace it roughly on the center line of each. And we want the width to be bigger than that. So let's just set the size. Let's try two, too big, 1.8. That 1.8 seems okay. And the hole can be 1.5, bit big, 
well, the hole doesn't really matter because it's actually going to get chopped off by the design. Um, if we put that there. Uh, we don't want to tent this via, which is the default rule. So you can see there we'd have a ring where that's where it starts. So yeah, there we go. That's just going to give us a nice ring. And I think there we go. This visual will be carrying on over. It's just the visual. It won't actually have this floating bit of copper. It'll be cut off and cropped within the circuit board. But that's the general idea. We'll do the same for this one. There we go. So that's the pads we will connect to, and we now need to join them to the rest of the circuit. So this is wanting a net of uh, the 3 volt here. And this wants a net of 5 volt. And now we need to connect those up. So this is going to be the main power in. So we want that to be nice and thick. Uh, we can do like 0.8 on here. Bring up the pad, go underneath. Let's just stay nice and thick to bring this power out. And then come back and let's make the main entry point there. So that's the 3 volt power coming from the actual board into the system, which is what we want. And now let's do the same for the 5 volt. This is going to get a bit tight here, but we should be able to do it. So come up, go underneath. Let's stay close to here again. And now we've come far enough at that thickness, otherwise we're not going to have much trace left. And down to the 5 volt here. So now that's joined in. Uh, we have the powers. The ground we can ignore. We've got ground there we can ignore. We have the start and select we need to bring over. And this transistor needs to come over there. So I'm going to bring that down a bit to make room. Uh, let's clean this trace up. And you have to bear in mind this transistor is carrying the current as well. So this ground trace wants to stay um, thick to be able to handle the half an amp. But we have a 0.3 mil trace there which can handle the half an amp. Uh, this trigger wants to go both sides and the start and select. So let's do start and select first. Let's get this over. And go all the way down here. I'm going to have to try and fit two traces through here. So... Go down, underneath, through here. And now you can see we're going to really struggle getting it through there. Let's take a look at... I'm going to look at this on the 3D. And we are getting close to that edge, but not too close. So we can move that down a little bit to allow for the trace. Let's just move that down two notches. Rejoin that. Rewire that in, and now we've got room there for these traces to get through. So let's go the other side and bridge them through. So we know GBA start, same thing, the start pad's actually here. So let's just chuck a via down in the center of that. And you can see there then, we have a nice solder pad for the actual start button. We'll copy that, we'll paste that into here. Let's just shrink that and make sure we are center, which we're not yet. Center there, to there. So we have the start and select. We'll make this net the select. We'll make this net the start. We'll do the same here because it's potentially a solder pad. Bring that up. Make connection to that. And now we wire the select up the same. Let's bring a wire out this way. And then all the way through. And up. 
until about here. So we have five volts needing to get all the way down here as well. And just remember this will be lighting up uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'd be about 100 milliamps, but again, the traces are fine for that. But we do need to get the 5 volts out from under here. We'll probably do 0.5 mil trace here as well. Go to the underside and come out here. We can thicken some of these traces just for the current carrying. With them being the 5 volt rail with quite a few and nothing else around, we might as well just thicken up where we can. And again, the 0.25 is more than thick enough. This is just because we can, we might as well. Now we know we've got the room for thicker traces, we can thicken them up a bit. So here now we have all the ends brought up. And we have to get the 5 volt rail over, which is this one. We have to get the trigger to ground, so effectively the sinking, so that's the power and ground of the LEDs. And we have to get the start and select wire over. So the start one will go on the bottom naturally. So we will thicken this bit up coming out. Drop to 0.5. And then drop to 0.3. And I reckon what we're going to do is have... Um, well, we'll see. We want to get ground over as well, so ground might be fun. Let's just run this one down here first. And we'll go all the way over. And let's not terminate yet because we want to flip these around once we get closer. So that's one line over. I think we can get try three on the top and one on the bottom. So this one wants to come over. And actually, let's just undo that because this is going to be thin and these are just trigger lines start and select. I'm going to do these thin so we keep the room. So this wants to be 0.2 and then we've got plenty of room to get the other traces through. So that's one. That's the start. And this is the select. And we can nice and easily then fit the power lines above that. We might even fit them all on the top at this rate. This one might as well connect because it's already in line. That one, yeah, probably just veer it over like that. And there's the connection for that. That'll want to come somewhere in because this one is going to have to go ah, there we go that's the problem with doing that that way we'll want to go around and through so when we come to do this one we have the room to get over to here somewhere and now If we take the trigger ground, and we want to keep this ideally about 0.35, but we can do 0.3 and get through like this. And there we go, we've made it. That can go straight into there. Now we have one more point from over here, and we've managed to keep the bottom layer free, which is good because then it allows us to keep a good ground plane. There's technically no ground plane over this side because there is no chips over here. These LEDs are all powered from the sinking ground, so it doesn't matter too much, but it was nice that we were able to keep the ground, keep the layer on the bottom ready for ground. I'll have to drop this to 0.35 to sneak it through here. And then we can keep a 0.35 trace just about on the power here. And that is literally just wide enough. So now we're going to have to 
just really squeeze in here to try and get a veer in here to allow us to drop to the other layer. Just about. And now the fun begins. So what we're going to have to do is move that back. There's no need for that to be over here. Free that up there. Move that down. Um, we could move that that side. So we could come there. Bring that over. I'm trying to basically free the bottom layer so we can do that. Because we've now got to get to the bottom layer through there by getting through the top layer. So if we bring that over, we can now come underside to here. Break away to top layer and just about fit through. And there we go, we've just got the power through. That wants to come down. And there we go, we've filled that nice and full. But we've managed it. So we are just on the edges of the PCB, but that's within the tolerance for the manufacturer. Just about. And all tolerances are different by manufacturers, but generally. Uh, point 0.2 is a good tolerance for a gap edge, and you can see that's a point 0.2 uh, trace. So we're within, I'd say just within the tolerance range, because if you did a point 0.2 trace like that, and you were to move it, you can see we are just about point 0.2 from the edge. I kind of know this from looking, because I've done it enough, uh, but that's fine. We're within, you know, tolerance. So that side's all wired. And all we've got left is this little bit to wire here. So grounds ignore... Um, we've got to get this wire then from here all the way over there. So because this is a crowded area here, let's work our way over. Let's go from here. And this is, again, bear in mind the um, thing powering the LEDs. So let's try and thicken all that up to 0.35. Uh, we'll have to make that one 0.3 to fit through. 0.25. There we go. Same with that. Make that 0.35 where we can. And then at this passing, we'll just make it 0.3. There we go. This is the last wire bar ground, I believe, from this side that we've got to get through. So um, this should be not too bad. So we've made it to here. And now we've got to get over to there. So I'd say the best bet here is to try and break out on the bottom layer. So what I'm going to try to do is work this around. So we're coming at it from the other side somehow. Maybe just carry on on the bottom layer. Yeah, there we go. So that's freed that up in a sense. Uh, which frees that up, which now allows us to come out from there, jump to the underside, and we're going to have to go, unfortunately, all the way out uh, to about here to jump back to get to there. So that's quite a lot of um, traces on the bottom layer and quite a lot here which I don't like but because ground isn't used over this end I don't need to worry about ground getting through there and there's plenty of gap for ground to find its way through here um, and connect there so we need to do which reminds me we need to do the ground connection so if we copy that um, this is where it's going to be slightly awkward. We want a ground connection here. We don't technically need it. I was going to use it there for um, support. So, you know, the board's got some security. But we have this here. So we're going to have to move that while out the way. Um, we're going to paste this. Into here. And you can see this is just going to have to be thinner. We're just going to have to do 0.3 on here to work our way around there. And this does not want to be netted to anything because there won't be ground. This is purely a uh, physical constraint. So there's going to be no net on there. And when we do 3, you can see we have uh, this arc that will just be enough to... Um, 
and get some solder on and hold the board in place. Because that's getting quite messy, what we'll do instead is we'll just draw um, the copper. So there's just a um, securing pad, which we've got to put a um, solder resist over so it actually can be seen. Let me just move that out of the way. Move this one to top solder resist. You can see there then it allows us to just have a sort of anchor pad. I'm going to copy both of these over and do the same for the ground this side, which will mean that's going to have to go right the way down. That can come up a bit. Let's just redo this. And let's see if we can fit that in here. So with a bit of rotation and position, I reckon there's a good connection point. And there we have the ground anchor points. We'll make this one actually connected to the ground net and we will add a wire from here and now you can see it will want to connect the ground so this is where ground's pretty simple we're just going to add vias to the bottom layer on all the ground pads which there aren't that many but if we just go to signals only everywhere there's a ground pad we'll come off jump to the underside to ground same with here we'll come out drop to ground same here and same here now this one is where we're going to struggle to get ground because of the bottom layer see how it's all covered in trace so we will need to break out here to get successfully to ground Uh, so now we can route straight up to ground here, and that'll be found there. So let me show you what we do to get to ground now. So on the bottom layer, because it's mostly empty, we just want to simply first select the board outline. We just want to do design, board shape, create primitives from board shape. It wants to be on the bottom layer, and it wants to... It doesn't matter about including cutouts, they're going to naturally get cut out. Then we can just select the border like this. Tools, convert, uh, region, or polygon rather, from selected objects. Delete the outline, and now we have a region we can fill with a ground net. Make it solid. Fill everywhere. Report. And you can see now we have a ground net that fills all around the board design and connects all the ground pads together. You can see here then these islands where we've got floating bits of islands. So um, we can select to remove islands effectively so we can see where the ground is going to work. And we also want a bit of retraction from the inner edge. We don't want to go right up to the edge. So I can do that in design rules, uh, create a board, outline tolerance, and let's set it for um, polygons 0.1, say. 
just want it to not quite go all the way up to the edge. Repour that, and you can see we have a nice little border now away from the edge. We can also see that there doesn't look like there's any more lines left to connect anything. So we have the ground coming from the trigger pad down to here, which then sends the ground all the way on the bottom layer and joins everywhere we send the via to the bottom. So that's how that's kind of solved the, um, the ground issue. If we take a look at the 3D view now, we can make sure it visually looks correct, which it does. Everything looks like it's connected. Everything looks like it's got protection. We've got the two points for power here, the ground here, and the pads for start and select here, and everything in position. So that looks like it's going to work. So next will be to generate the outputs of this and order the PCB, and then do some assembly. So this is the circuit board design. We'll do the production and fabrication outputs next. Show you how to take this and convert it to files that a fabricator needs in order to make this PCB and we'll place the order.